Next guest is Simon. Simon Kura. Pleased to, pleased to meet you and welcome aboard. Do you want to do your session from the... Yeah, so Simon is obviously the Australian editor of BuzzFeed and in the past year since BuzzFeed launched in um, February 2014, he's really been part of a team that's seen BuzzFeed uh, learn what Australians like to share and the reasons why they like to share that content online. So Simon's had a, a, a career that's experienced a whole range of different... Uh, I guess, um, circumstances. Uh, he, he sent me some of the, the highlights or potentially lowlights. I'm not sure about the reporting from maximum security prisons in B Bangkok and Moscow, but he's been there. He's interviewed Hollywood A-listers. He's done all sorts of things in the past year with BuzzFeed in regards to um, things like the hashtag Tay for Hottest 100, which I'm sure he'll tell you about. And also um, just the things that get Melbournians fired up such as the uh, top smoking guns of the AFL. But here to tell us more is Simon. There we go. Okay, so uh, in BuzzFeed style, I'm going to do a list. And obviously, the first thing to say is that, uh, although I'm the Australian editor, I'm not actually Australian. I'm really sorry about that. I'm Scottish, born and bred. But I've been here in Australia five years this time, and I was previously here 10 years ago as well. Um, so I'm, I, I don't see it down here, so I'm going to do a bit back and forward, so hopefully you can keep up. I understand I've got to do the whole thing in 15 minutes, is that right? So I'm going to go very, very fast, because I'd like an opportunity for questions as well. Um, BuzzFeed, um, basically, I'm going to rush through and talk a little bit about uh, the OMG content we do, a lot about the identity content we do, and uh, a lot about the different things that we've discovered in the last 12 months since we've been in Australia. Um, about what Australians really like. And we're very lucky indeed to, be, um, to have an amazing amount of data on um, BuzzFeed. And so we've got a real good sense of what Australians like to click on and what they like to share. So we're starting to build up a really interesting picture. Um, we've only been here a year, and I think that um, we're sort of, you know, we're about 70% there in terms of understanding who our audience is. I think we've probably got another six to 12 months of sort of figuring it out. And this year we're going to be doing a lot more news. And so it's going to be really interesting to see uh, the, the split between the kind of classic buzz and the new stuff. Um, this is what we call ourselves, the company for the social age. And that's really because um, our distribution is through social media. Uh, so BuzzFeed, as of this day, has 200 million global uniques. Um, obviously, the, the site has been uh, going for about nine years in the US, first within Huffington, well, first as a lab on the side of Huffington Post, and then separate once Jonah um, released some equity from uh, the, the sale of Huffington Post to AOL. And um, our, our whole distribution method is powered by the mobile phone and uh, by social media. That's, uh, we get people coming to our site um, and put, putting in buzzfeed.com, but the vast majority of people will find it on their social feeds, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest, a whole load of different social networks. Um, last year, in August, we split um, the site to make it a bit clearer to people externally what we were doing into news, buzz, and life. And so the, we have this news vertical now. Um, internationally, we now have more reporters and uh, journalists working in the news vertical, more of straight reporters than people creating lists and quizzes. Um, and we have verticals doing business and doing uh, investigations. We have a dozen people in the US doing uh, big investigations, and we've just hired somebody in the UK to start an investigation unit, and we're going to be hiring some reporters there. Um, and uh, then, obviously, Buzz is the kind of thing that BuzzFeed was for many years, the list, the quizzes, the identity-based stuff, the stuff that's really relatable to who you are and that you want to share. Um, and then Life is uh, you know, a lifestyle vertical that's becoming increasingly popular. Um, people love sh pinning stuff on Pinterest. It's a really big driver of content and, and traffic for us. Um, and so it's food, uh, start, like, style, travel, DIY, which isn't Bunnings, but is actually like things you kind of life hack together and make yourself. Um, and then increasingly video. So uh, video internationally is um, something that's been going about um, 18 months and is now um, you know, doing amazing guns for us in terms of um, the amount of views we get and also in terms of um, the revenue that we're generating. And um, here in Australia, you can see we've got, we've got 800 million monthly views now on the video, which is basically only been going a year and a half, uh, 30 million subscribers to our YouTube channel, um, 1,000 videos with over a million views each, and 50% um, of the views are from mobile. And probably, you've probably seen a BuzzFeed video on, on Facebook or on YouTube as you're scrolling through your feed. 
so I think we haven't done um, video here in Australia much. We basically haven't got a video unit. It's not part of our plans for this year. But we did have a bit of an experimentation when some, one of our colleagues came in September. And we made two videos. And um, we're going to show a little bit of one now. And uh, that basically, this video um, uh, was the, 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 this, the, the two videos we did. They were the number two and three videos in October on BuzzFeed. This one did, I think, uh, 5 million on, on YouTube and 7 million on Facebook. So I think uh, the world wants to see Australians doing videos. So hopefully we'll do a bit more of it. We'll just have a quick look. You guys make chips as big as your head. Of course you do, because it's America. I always hear people talking about Cool Ranch, and I don't even know what Cool Ranch is. I picture like cowboys, like, but really cool cowboys. Cool. Oh. Mmm. Mm. Tastes better than normal, like, nacho cheese Doritos. That's what cool cowboys would probably taste like. They should bring that here. Flaming hot. Whoa, they're like bright red. Ugh, that stinks. Don't have any, like, fluorescent red food. Ugh. Be good with beer. Really hot. They're flaming hot, even. No good. I don't know how someone could eat, like, a whole bag of that. Just one of that is... Very spicy. Our old mate Cheeto here is experiencing what I've been going through right now. Just like, look at my hands, they're like bright red. Slam jams. Slam jams. Beef, pork, mechanically separated chicken. As opposed to hand separated? Is this actual meat or, okay, I don't know what's in it. It feels like a sausage that's been like, put behind a sofa for a while. That tastes really good actually. I'm with Jenna, they're not that bad. It has the consistency of like dried foreskin. It tastes good, but after reading the ingredients, it, you know, I don't really want to eat any more of them one bite. World famous easy cheese. I don't even know what to expect here. Made with real cheese. I find that hard to believe. I'm no cheese expert, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't come in a can. Is there like a button? So you just like put your finger on it. <gasps> ah! Oh sh... It's like popping a zip. Oh. It's actually not as bad as it looks like it's going to be. Tastes kind of like off cream cheese. America is trying to make things that will outlast humans. Somehow you guys seem more happier and I'm right now I'm booking a one-way airfare to the United States. Okay, so that's a little one that we did just in our office with just, just some staff writers for our team. And um, I'm really hopeful that at some point this year or next, we'll start to be able to do a lot more because I think that uh, it's a lot of fun doing that kind of stuff. So that's where we are with video. Um, so BuzzFeed is obviously an international company. Australia was the third international edition after the US and the UK. Uh, we started a year after the UK, and now we have 800 staff globally. So when I started 14, 15 months ago, we had uh, 275, and now we have 800. So we're growing very fast. We're expanding very quickly. Uh, we have, after us, we've had offices in Sao Paulo and Mumbai and Berlin last year. And this year, we have plans to open three or four more offices around the world. And it's basically the same kind of um, method of starting them up. We start off with a very small team of editors who kind of try and figure out what people like to share. And then if it works, then we grow from there. So it's um, really exciting to see what's going to happen this year. Um, we've also got this global focus in terms of doing uh, serious straight news reporting. We have reporters and bureaus um, in uh, Gaza, Iraq, uh, Ukraine, Kenya, and Mexico, and again, plans to expand more. I think we've got uh, a dozen reporters who are out in, uh, in the field around the world, and we've been doing some amazing reporting this year in various places. Uh, sorry, last year. Um, so we launched, as I said, in February last year. We launched with um, yeah, this desire just to experiment and find out what Australians like. And that was really our mission, is just to target Australian and New Zealand readers and, and start doing the same kind of buzz stuff that has, has worked so well in the US and the UK before. And also to tell the rest of the world about what Australia is like and to be giving a kind of honest representation of our kind of amazingly diverse and exciting uh, climate and culture. And um, this is our small growing um, team. So we started off just with a team of um, three people. We've now expanded to 12 in, the, in recent months. I've got another couple starting next week. We have a advertising at the moment for a news editor and an indigenous affairs reporter. So we're starting to expand our news operation and growing in different ways uh, in terms of the news buzz and life type verticals. Um, as I said, our distribution method is in, almost entirely by social. About 75% of our views come just through social media. Um, Facebook obviously is a massive driver of that, but also Pinterest we've discovered here is really, really big. Pinterest is our second and um, much higher than Twitter, but um, it, we also have a, a Twitter presence as well. Um, so now I'm going to rush, rush through uh, seven uh, things that we've learned about Australia so far. 
Um, this is our kind of spirit animal, which is the quokka. Uh, in the UK, everyone thinks that we're a kind of cat company, um, and I'm quite proud to say that in Australia we haven't done one article about cats. In my belief, um, Australia is more a dog country than a cat, and I'm sorry to the cat owners, I own two Australian dogs. Uh, and um, so we've done a little bit of dog stuff, no cat stuff, and lots of quokka stuff. Quokkas are like, you know, I think as BuzzFeed's got big and everyone thinks we're cats, in the US now the, our sort of spirit animal is the sloth, which is kind of like this kind of slow moving, chilled out dude. And here in Australia, we were looking for something that kind of personified what we're about. And the quokka, quok, if you've seen it, it only lives on Rottenness Island in WA. It's basically smiling the whole time. And, um, you know, it, does kind of, it doesn't give a fuck about anything. You know, it's just like, ah, you know. So that's our kind of mascot. The, um, so here's the seven things. Australians love Liz. Liz is obviously what BuzzFeed was founded on. This is the biggest um, post on BuzzFeed with Australian views last year. Um, it did 965,000. So we're not yet cracked a post in Australia that's done a million views, but this one got close. This was done from Erin, who's in our, our New York office. Um, the second biggest was Jemima's post, which was facts that shock anyone who grew up in Australia. Um, and uh, this was the great shareable thing on Facebook was that actually this rainbow powder pop, it's not made of rainbows, it's made of food coloring, who knew? Um, and that's done 858,000 views. And so lists are really like a great device for us, for, for people to share. They kind of, you know what you're getting when you get into it. You know that if it's 47, how far you've got to scroll. And there's a whole kind of alchemy relating to like how many numbers we use. They bring order amongst chaos. So, you know, they give people a sense of, you know, trying to um, put the whole world together and understand what it's all about. Um, and actually, they're a great device for doing more serious stuff as well. We've done quite a lot of serious news via lists. And actually, this was actually a detailed post, which had you know, a whole lot of interviews within it. And rather than write it you know, straight out as a kind of 3,000 word think piece, we did it as a list. And it, it, it really went off and was one of our biggest kind of news stories last year. So lists are mega viral. And I'm going to show you each time one of these. This is kind of the dashboard that we see internally. The blue view is the views, views just on BuzzFeed, and the red is viral. Our, all our content is designed to go viral. And you know, an average BuzzFeed post gets about a 1.2 or 1.3 lift, which means that a percentage of its content is coming uh, from social media. A really good post gets above 1.6 or 1.8, and then the, ma the majority of its content, of its views, sorry, are coming from social media. So that one did really well. Aussies are very proud. Identity is a big thing. We're very proud. Um, Australians of, of where we live and um, you know like our country and our cities and where we grew up and all those things and pride is a really th shareable thing so um, we've been doing quite a lot of um, buzz around Perth, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne um, and you know each time we come back to these things they go off they're really shareable people love to share this sense of like look at this great place I live or people are kind of aspiring to live in Australia in different ways we'll share this stuff as well um, a great combination is to do pride plus humor and people like actually you know, they can feel pride, but also kind of it can be a bit self-deprecating or taking the piss, and they love that as well. It's like, you know, obviously Melbourne is this amazing and livable, beautiful city, but uh, maybe sometimes some people might say it takes itself a bit too seriously. I don't know. Um, and then, you know, there's a flip side of uh, a whole lot of people who you'll see, like, in, in Melbourne. So this post, th th these kind of posts do really well for us. And pride generally is a very kind of viral thing and a very shareable thing. This is a post I did about Sydney, and you can see that, like, um, you know, 860,000 of those views were just coming through social media, so people sharing it with their friends and family on social media. Nostalgia, okay, everybody um, has got great fond, happy memories of when they grew up, and this is again a really shareable thing. Molly grubs, aspects of growing up in Australia, particularly in the 90s, is really big for us. A little bit in the 80s and a little bit in the noughties, but the 90s seems to be the thing where our audience is really at. Um, and it's hugely shareable. People love to share, um, particularly women love to share. Um, they love to share with their friends, their family. And so, you know, tapping into these things is, you know, we have a, a heavily female staff and um, our, 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 our traffic and audience is in the vast majority female. And so, you know, that's something that, you know, we're, we're keen to serve and to, keen to find ways of um, attracting. And then, you know, again, we come into different aspects of it, children, TV shows or movies or, um, you know, Australian-based content. And this is a big part of, like, our team, they do about 50% Australian posts and then 50% Harry Potter or Game of Thrones or whatever else everybody cares about. Um, but certainly, Australian-based stuff is kind of, uh, you know, a big driver and it's also very viral. You can see here this post. This was an early post we did in, in February last year, so near, like a whole year ago, and it did half a million views, which was amazing. Australia obviously lives in this amazing, you know, we all, most of us live in cities um, and we're not, not fighting um, snakes off or riding to work on a kangaroo, but um, there is this amazing, diverse, wild, crazy country out there and, um, you know, we see it going, um, doing amazing traffic for us internationally, but also here in Australia. This is my biggest post, which did 8 million views around the world. 
did, it's the second biggest post we've done in Australia, did 775,000 in Australia. Tourism Australia were really pissed off. They said that it was giving a really negative impression of Australia. There's lots of snakes and spiders and, you know, uh, but, but, you know, people, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a pride thing. Australians are proud that they live in this country where they battle the elements and the snakes and spiders and all those things. Um, and yeah, again, weather is a huge thing. You know, I, like you guys probably, I woke up this morning, I was like, what the fuck? It's pissing down with rain. I've got a ticket for the cricket. This is no good, but like it switches around. There are, one moment it's like this, the next is this gigantic storm. And you know, this is a great thing that people can really get on. And every time there's a crazy weather storm here or in Sydney or Brisbane, you know, we do a post and it just goes off. People love to share it. So those kind of things are mega viral. This post here did 16 times the views on social media as it did on the site. And still each week, this is usually my top 10 posts. It just keeps on ticking on. People are like still finding it a year on almost. And it's done, you know, like this is actually an older slide, but 8 million views. Um, what we've discovered since we put a news reporter in in July last year is that Australians are actually, you know, young Australians who knew are actually really passionate about the news. They're really passionate about what's going on in Canberra and they really want to know more about it and, and perhaps they're, you know, not safe, um, satisfied so much about the way it's done in traditional media. And so we've had great successes in kind of feeding this appetite, feeding this hunger that people have got for news. Um, and this is still like a figuring out phase we're in, but we're learning much more. You know, we were, Mark, um, our reporter and I were in Canberra this week, and we had great fun kind of, for, this is the first week we'd been there. We booked it out weeks in advance, and we ended up having a spill on the first day, which was very exciting. And we just kind of, um, you know, spent some time there, and I think that more and more will, you know, it's an ambition to be covering politics. Not straight like everyone else does it, but with some fun and reverence, but taking it seriously, because obviously, you know, these are serious issues. Um, as I said at the beginning, I'm Scottish. This is a, an amazing live kind of vote thing we did with eight reporters around Scotland on the day of the um, devolution, revolution, uh, devolution revolution, unfortunately not, devolution vote. Um, and again, you know, we're going to be looking closely at what the election in the UK this year and planning for the election in Australia next year in terms of how we cover these things. Um, we use Twitter a lot um, as journalists, as engaged people in the news. Twitter is this amazing source for us and this amazing place to kind of um, you know, hunt out a story and it's this great notebook. Um, Mark uh, did an amazing job around the Sydney siege. We were in some ways lucky. It was right beside our office. He was out there and he was drawing attention to the fact that people were taking selfies and like there was you know, just this behind the scenes kind of coverage. And you know, on that day, he put, doubled his um, Twitter followers and you know, we did, a, I think, a good job. So if you're not following him on Twitter and you want to know about what's happening in Australia, I would recommend it highly, Mark the Steph. Um, so yeah, news is mega viral. This is a, the Karl Stefanovic post, which I think actually came out of an interview that was in The Age. Um, we did a, this is a guy, David Mack, who wrote this post, is actually an Australian, but he's based in a New York office, but he did it on a Saturday, and it went crazy views. So you know, people like news, they want to know what's going on. Uh, number six, sorry, is that Australians love lols. Everyone loves to laugh. We particularly love to laugh. We love to like, uh, laugh at ourselves. We love to laugh at the difference between Australia, Australian English and a British or American English, and the differences between our culture. And we've had a lot of, you know, the, we've had a lot of back and forth with our UK and US office about kind of figuring some of these kind of things out. This is a, a really hilarious. These Americans trying to work out some of our kind of nicknames and words and stuff like that. It's great. Um, and then, you know, we like to share stuff funny about ourselves, and we do a lot of that, about sharing stuff about Australians doing funny things. Um, and particularly for like, you know, uniquely Australian things like people drinking, playing, I think this is Goon of Fortune, where the goon's on the hill's hoist and it goes round and round. This kind of stuff, this just went off this one here on Facebook for us. Um, and then Australians, you know, going overseas and doing fun stuff. Hamish Blake obviously did this, this amazing kind of humans in New York stuff. And um, that post, Brad did it and it did nearly a million views. Um, and as I said, we do back and forward, great stuff here with the US and um, kind of guessing all these states, you know. They don't seem to realize we even have states sometimes, so I think actually we're a bit better informed about America than they are about us, but this back and forward is a really fun part. And so the post Jenna did, did 1.2 million, it's really good for us. So yeah, lols are mega viral. Um, this is one that Brad did this week. It's done 4 million views around the world. It's just about um, Snape and Harry Potter. And you know, um, this, this, you know I think, it's amazing that young people generally in their 20s and 30s, they're massively engaged. It's where they, they get all their news information on the, on the internet. We're very lucky to kind of be there in that space. Rule number seven is this discovery that um, Australians, like everyone else, I guess, like sex, and they're sort of um, perverted in some way or another. One of the things that's great for me about BuzzFeed is that like, I worked um, mainly most of my career, I'm sorry, for Rupert Murdoch for News Corp. And one of the things that was kind of difficult was that um, you know, there was this kind of objectification of women and a lot of um, page three in the UK and like, oh, let's have, find a funny picture for page one. It's going to be a woman semi-naked. And one of the things we've done here is kind of turn that on our head and we've done a lot of kind of objectifying of men. And I think that we cop a lot of flack. People are like, you guys are sexist. It's like, it's not sexist if it's objectifying men. Um, so Jenna particularly has had great success in mining this and, and focusing in a lot on Australia as well. This is what we did around 
around the Tafer Hottest 100 thing you mentioned. We did a kind of list of the hottest Aussie men. Um, she loves us doing AFL men, um, NRL men, like ranking. We have a great game in the office for a week where we kind of work out who's sexiest or the girls work out who's sexiest. And then it generates this great kind of engagement and discussion. So if you're not following Jenna and you like to look at um, uh, pictures of men or you want to know also about feminism and gender issues in Australia, I would recommend you follow Jenna on Twitter as well. And you know, we haven't really got time to go through this, but this is this great. There's, a, there's amazing discussion once you get down to the comments about all these things. And I think I'm proud that Australia, that BuzzFeed generally is really, uh, really involved in the kind of gender space, really, um, you know, re really engaged in kind of issues relating to feminism and also relating to, you know, all sorts of. We're, we're really interested in LGBT. One of the reports I have this week is a, a girl who's um, going to be an LGBT reporter. Um, and so I think, you know, the, the, these aspects of identity are like feminism and, and uh, race and uh, gender uh, and uh, sexuality are really big drivers for us in terms of how we're going to cover news. So it's going to be interesting to see how that figures out. Objectifying men is mega viral, and you can see that that particular post. Um, can you make it through this post without your ovaries exploding? Uh, did 1.5 million views with a really good social lift. So in short, make stuff that's worth sharing. And <laughs> love pockets because they're the best. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Take a seat and take a breath. Ladies and gentlemen, Simon has just gone through 72 slides in about 15 minutes, and I think that must be a record, and that's got to be the way that BuzzFeed needs to be presented. That was excellent. Um, Simon, thank you so much. Stay there. Thank you so much, everybody. Give Simon a round of applause.